welcome back to Maxim's Inside Track. Uh, a very interesting world that we, we live in. Uh, Australia uh, has some challenges around COVID, in particular Victoria and the borders closing. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate before we start that dairy is an essential service and uh, products will flow between borders. Our business is open and uh, happy to assist where we can um, with, with whatever your requirements might be on that front. Uh, we've, yeah, we've got uh, FX, the Australian dollar is strong, um, which is making some of these imports still look uh, attractive. Uh, Australia's milk flows uh, are solid, uh, with Tasmania recording its highest milk flows uh, ever. So that's encouraging. We hope that uh, Australia can maintain this growth of its milk pool and uh, with uh, pretty solid milk payout prices domestically, uh, we should see this uh, milk pool continue to grow. Uh, we still do have some uh, some challenges around the world, in particular, uh, you know, uh, this, these economies will come under pressure. Um, unemployment uh, feels as though it will increase, uh, in particular you know, Australia and the US uh, and the UK, um, which uh, I think potentially <clears throat> Uh, well, we need to look at as um, casting some caution over these um, continually uh, growing um, prices for, for dairy. So we'll kick this off with full cream milk powder, an extremely strong result, uh, up 14% on the GDT overnight. Uh, uh, this is with some not very high volumes basically, and in particular uh, 24% uh, August went up uh, based on about 500 tonnes. So as you could imagine with about 170 odd participants uh, bidding for 500 tonne, you can see how you can get these spike in percentages and, and demand if you need that uh, full cream milk powder for your, for your factory. Um, I also think one of the contributing factors to this is New Zealand's ability to manage COVID and people view that market as probably a clean green source of, of product. Um, um, uh, from from that region, so that would have contributed. Uh, we will see milk volumes increase and whole milk powder uh, volumes increase on that platform. A great result. Uh, is it sustainable longer term? Not sure. In the short term, potentially, uh, there was talk of China having um, significant stockpiles of whole milk powder. Whether that is the case or not, their participation in that particular event was about 50%. Uh, so, yeah, we, we probably see some short-term pipeline fill and, and pretty strong demand uh, for the moment on whole milk powder. On a skim milk powder now, uh, skim milk powder has a bit of a tailwind as well. Um, we're seeing prices sort of across the, in particular Europe and Oceania, pop up uh, anywhere between one and a half to three and a half percent. Uh, there is product availability. Um, Oceana coming into their peak milk flow in the Southern Hemisphere. Feels like uh, this product, um, I don't think it'll run away from us, but you know, there, there is uh, some reasonable demand. Products available, um, yeah, I, I think sideways-ish to slightly firmer for this category for the, for the moment. Onto the fats now, butter and AMF. Uh, butter popped up on that GDT uh, a little bit. Uh, we have seen European prices uh, relatively firmish, and they've rebounded off uh, off the lows of sort of four, six weeks ago, two months ago. So, yeah, my, one of my concerns around this category still remains with food service and food service demand, um, and in particular, you know, in Australia, back into. Uh, 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 partial lockdown in Victoria uh, for the next six weeks and, and how does that impact food service demand locally. Um, yeah, uh, AMF uh, a little bit softer. Uh, look, I, I feel as though fats uh, are available and uh, demand and, and supply reasonably balanced. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of predicting this one to, to, to go sideways for the next little while as well. On to cheeses now. Uh, one of the uh, significant points here is the American pricing and demand uh, on the CME. The blocks uh, are just 
but yeah, extremely high in demand, seems to be there in particular for the short term. Uh, and Oceana, there is product available, um, pricing is, is leveling off, uh, GDT went up slightly, um, mature product is still difficult to secure uh, out of Australia and New Zealand and um, yeah, the European product uh, is, is yeah, sitting uh, mid-range for the moment. Um, yeah, the, so American um, yeah, food service demand is extremely uh, strong and holding up that, uh, that US pricing. Moving on to whey and lactose now, just with that uh, demand for cheese out of the US, uh, that obviously produces a significant amount of whey and we have seen uh, sweet whey pricing drift off uh, whilst lactose has still remained very strong and, and buoyant. Uh, we do think that that protein market is under a little bit of pressure, um, in particular the WPCs, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out with um, you know probably online sales. Uh, still really strong and uh, any of these um, gyms and, and other retail outlets are struggling a little bit. Um, that concludes uh, this edition. Hope you all keep well and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks very much.